Good morning, dear students. How are you? Hope you are all safe and sound at home and enjoying the continuous classes we are doing in the online. Okay. I welcome you to the digital classes of Mahila Samaja School. I, your English teacher, welcomes you to the second chapter that is Amelia Arhat for class 6. Students, now I will read the chapter. Please do listen with full attention. Yeah, Ahert. Mary Ahert was an American aviation pioneer and author. Ahert was the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She was born in 24th July 1897. In Atchison, Kansas, USA. She disappeared in the month of July 2 in 1937 in Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean, she disappeared from the boat. We don't know what's the date she expired. Amelia Earhart, the first woman to pilot an airplane from the Atlantic to the Pacific coast, was full of curiosity and adventure since her childhood. She, along with her sister Muriel, often tinkered and experimented with things around the house to come up with interesting inventions, a roller coaster that descended from the top of a shed, a pulley system that sent things from the home to a neighboring one. So these are the experiments she used to do when she was a child. A harness for the dog to pull a dog carriage around. Born on July 24, 1897 in Atchison, Kansas, Amelia Earhart's enthusiasm and free spirit knew no bounds. During her lifetime, Amelia made a series of record-breaking flights, set up the first women pilots association, designed clothing for women pilots, and authored books about her flying experiences. In June 1937, Amelia embarked upon the first round around the world flight from one of the stops along the route during this fateful adventure, she sent her husband a letter in which she wrote, Please know, I am quite aware of the hazards. I want to do it because I want to do it. Women must try to do things as men have tried. When they fail, their failure must be but a challenge to others. The following text is a compilation, compilation of biographical and clocks from Amelia Earhart's childhood. Notice glimpses of her free and adventurous spirit even there. So here are the three incidents of her life. Let's go for the first one. First toilet, airplane from Atlantic to the Pacific coast. American aviatrix Amelia Earhart was born on July 24, 1897, in Atchison, Kansas. Amelia was a rambunctious child, though her mother wanted her to be a proper lady instead of a tomboy. I can see Amelia growing up and seeing her mother juggling an alcoholic husband, not very much money, and I think throughout her life, Amelia tried to avoid any kind of conventional female life. After a plane ride at an airship, she decided she would learn to fly. In 1928, she was invited to be the first female to fly across the Atlantic, but only as a passenger. With pilot Bill Stokes and mechanic Lewis E. Gordon, Earhart landed in the United Kingdom on June 17, 1928. Amelia was an instant sensation. I think she was somewhat embarrassed 
by the attention she got because as she knew she had done nothing on this flight she was just a passenger she kept the log but she really referred to herself as a sack of potatoes after the flight promoter george p putnam began managing amelia's career it's very difficult to describe gp putnam he was flamboyant, uh, he was handsome, he could be charming. When he lost his temper, his language was incredibly evil. Putnam began heavily promoting Earhart's career, lecture tours and product endorsements. People criticized GP for pushing Amelia too hard. Uh, number one, I think she was a willing participant in this. And number two, she really had to do it. That was the way that you would raise the money for these flights. Though their relationship started out strictly professional, they would eventually marry in 1931. After several more successful flights, including a solo trip across the Atlantic, Earhart decided to fly around the world. Amelia and navigator Fred Noonan took off from Oakland, California on June 1, 1937, and made it 22,000 miles to Maine, New Guinea. Earhart's last flight, having started out with Wilhelm, but on the way along the flight, she would fly an average area of 10 to 12 hours a day. So by the time she got to break, she was wrecked. The next flight to Howland Island was problematic. Overcast skies hindered celestial navigation, and it was discovered later that they were using inaccurate maps. At 8.43 a.m. on July 3rd, U.S. Coast Guard vessel Itzika received the last communication from Earhart and launched an immediate search. However, the plane was never found. It's not the mystery of the disappearance that uh, we want to stress. To her, the flying is uh, such a wonderful experience. She wanted it to be safe. She wanted uh, people to uh, enjoy it. I hope you watched the video there. Now let's start the fifth chapter. A close call. In Amelia's childhood, boys were permitted to ride sleds down the hills of Atchison while laying down, but girls were expected to sit up in a more ladylike posture. So students here posture means the position. Amelia not surprisingly defied convention and lay down on her sled. At one point, she wrote this posture saved her life. So when Amelia was a small child, so boys were allowed to ride sleds. Sled mitts I will show you. Down the hills of Atchison laying on the sleds, but girls were expected to sit up straight like a lady. So girls are expected to sit straight. Okay, they are not allowed to ride the sleds there. Amelia not surprisingly broke this tradition and lay on her sled. So she wanted to broke, break this uh, tradition well, because always uh, they, she don't want to give the chance for the boys. Amelia not surprising broke this tradition and lay on her sled. There was a time when she told that this posture of her saved her life. Okay. I was zipping down one of the really steep hills in town when a junk man's cart pulled my, uh, by a horse with enormous blinders came out from a side road. The hill was so icy that I couldn't turn and junk man didn't hear the squeals of warning. So I was coming down one of the really steep hills in the town when a man's car, which was driven by a horse, so horse with large and very big blinders. Okay, it was carrying the blinders, came from a roadside. The hill was so filled with snow that she couldn't turn. Okay, so sleds are the uh, transport uh, carried in the snowy areas. Okay, the hill was so filled with the snow that she couldn't turn and the man also didn't hear the instruction and warning after so screaming, screaming is jorali kirchitana, screaming. In a second, my sled has skipped between the front and back legs of the horse and got clear before either he or I knew what had happened. 
had i been sitting up either my head or the horse race could have suffered in contact probably the horse race so what happened so when she was driving the sled there uh, opposite to side of cart was coming both they got hit so in one second in just a fraction of second her sled went in between the legs of the horse so the sled went in the legs between the legs of the horse and nothing happened to her so that was a miracle for her i we can say here if she would be sitting up either her head or the horse's rib bones would have broken probably the horse's rib cage would have broken there okay this is a sledge that is reused in the uh, snowy areas Sleds. So, what is the meaning of sled here? It means a heavy, long-handled mall or hammer used to drive stakes, wedges, etc. You can see here. It's also a noun and have a noun. Noun form is a slow sled drawn by animals, typically on snow, ice, or grass. The sled drawn better, far better upon the ice. I cannot say the same for the dogs. Sled verb form to ride, travel with, or transport in a sled. Go for the next incident here. Courage never hesitates. Amelia's pet dog, James Ferocious, was a constant childhood companion and smoothed with affection by both her and her sister. Her sister name is Muriel. James Ferocious was not particularly friendly to strangers, so he was kept tied to a shed. One afternoon, some neighborhood boys passed by the fence where James Ferocious was resting. As was his nature, James Ferocious instinctively growled at the boys. Noticing the animal was tied in a place, the boys began to tease the dog. James Ferocious became infuriated and upon breaking free from his dog chain, took after the perpetrators. The boys had to climb atop the shed for safety. So Amelia had a pet dog. As you people will be having the dog in your home, no? In the same way, Amelia was also having the dog. He, uh, she kept the name as James Ferocious. You will have the name by um, what do you call it? This puppy, Tino, Rino. You will have your pet names, no? In the same way, Amelia's pet dog names were James Ferocious. Okay. It was Amelia's friend from childhood, and it was taken care by Amelia and her sister. Her name I told you, Moriel. James Ferocious was not friendly with the other people, so he was kept tied all the time. If you people are having the pet in your home, as soon as the stranger will enter the home, they, that animal, uh, that is a dog, it will start barking there. Okay, dog will start barking there. So. Uh, because of that reason, she used to keep tight all the time. Jane's nature was to growl and bark all the time. Bark means bugloro, not the tree bark there. Is that? As he was tied all the time, a few boys used this opportunity to tease him. Tease under nine or eleven or eight or ten or eleven or twelve. So at that time, some boys they had the practice of teasing the dog there. James got angry and broke his chain and ran behind those boys. So he got very angry and he broke his chain and ran behind those boys. Seeing this, the boys had to climb the roof of a shed for their safety. So cutti dare anta hill bitto. Nai na rakes dare. Ad nai yen marute. Amelia nai. That is a James Ferocious. Atis kun barute bar. Adrin da yen marta ne boys so they will climb the roof of a shed for their safety. They were not knowing that if James Ferocious was so powerful and so strong, they will break the chain and come behind them. 
so children i hope you understood this lesson i will continue in the next chapter okay watch this video carefully now we'll go for the glossary created extremely angry perpetrators offenders tip over turn over lack a type of fat used for cooking smoothed surrounded by friends take on the home assignment questions write this answers in the homework book and submit in the whatsapp group the first question is who is jane ferocious who were teasing the dog where was amelia born meet you in the next class with the continuation of this chapter part 2 till then stay home stay safe have a good day thank you